Hey crafty friends, it's Amanda with Pear Blossom Press and today I'm excited to share this fun card with you. I made a light up dancing ghost and this card is uh, featuring all dies from Spellbinders and one of our one lights from Pear Blossom Press. If you haven't seen these new dies from Spellbinders, they're really cute. They've got Christmas, Halloween, uh, quite a few different dancing sets and I'll show you how to put one together but I thought it would be fun to light up the ghost's eyes for this card. I'll show you what I started with first. I've got an A2 card base and a card front, and then I cut out my ghost three times. I've got his legs. I saved the inner pieces of his eyeballs, and you can see in the die set here, it's got a lot of different stuff. It also has candy, and I'm actually gonna turn those into bats because I thought that would be fun. I used some arches to make tombstones, and then I've got an older frame set here, and I saved some of the little pop out pieces because they're the right size to go behind those legs so I can add more color to the stripes. Uh, that die set was the small die set of the month in December of 21. And then this is our one light. Um, it's just got one light, just like it says. And I'll show you how to use those. In fact, if you only wanted to see how the lights work, just skip ahead to 12 minutes and 30 seconds. Um, I am gonna use a little piece of vellum behind the eyes. And you saw me hold up a little packet of little dots. Those are for uh, the legs. That's how I'm going to make them dance. So let's go ahead and get started here. Um, I do have one of these little sticky sheets that has the little micro dots on it and I thought that would be faster than applying glue to the back of this frame um, since I want to stack four of them together. But the problem with these micro dot sheets is that no matter what when you lift up the top piece of rele release paper some of those dots are going to go on the top and most of them will stay on the bottom. So when you put your piece in there, you will get sticky stuff on both sides of your paper. And like I said, I've tried like three or four different brands of these. It always happens and it's it's really cool. It's a time saver for this kind of thing. Just don't use it for your top piece. So you see, I, I put two pieces together. I'm gonna layer those two on top of the back piece. And then when I put the fourth piece on top, instead of putting it in there again, um, what I'll do is I will just add adhesive, uh, wet adhesive to my fourth layer to put on top. And that'll keep the, um, the top of it, st no sticky stuff on the top, if that makes sense. Um, so it did, it did save me quite a bit of time to stack the three layers together, but to make sure I have a nice, clean, smooth top, um, I'll use the wet glue here. And you don't have to put glue everywhere. You wanna try to get you know, most of the, the dots and stuff or the uh, curly cues that stick out. And then you can just kind of dot it wherever. But a lot of times I find it's easier to run my, my uh, the bead of glue, just keep it going. <laughs> so you'll see me put it all over the place. And I am working on my glass desk, so it's easy to clean up. Um, this die is, it's a, a little thin. So it took me a minute to kind of put it all together. But while that dries, I want to show you that I already stacked up the Hey Boo. And the top layer is a light purple glitter paper, which I thought was really pretty. Kind of makes the, um, the sentiment pop. So while that's drying, I'm going to do some ink blending here. I have uh, three shades of purple. I'm only going to use the medium and the dark right here. And then I have some black soot as well. And I'm starting on that lavender card front. If you start with a, a colored piece of paper, then it kind of does some of the work for you. So you can um, do your ink blending on it. The trick for a smooth ink blending is to just keep adding more ink until it is nice and smooth. And I'm going for sort of a vignette feeling. So I've got the lightest in the center, getting darker as we get to the outside edges, and then um, adding some black soot to the edges as well. Now, the one problem if you're going to splatter on water like I will in a second is that when you remove the ink or when the ink dries with the water on top of it uh, it can't go any lighter than the paper that you started with the, the color of the paper you started with so this will only dry back to a light purple which is totally fine for me because I'm going to come back in and splatter some unicorn watercolor ink on there those are from LH colors my friend Linnea she's making watercolors and they're really cool this one is unicorn it's really really pretty um, so I'm just gonna add a little bit of water to it and then you see I've got a paintbrush and one of my bling palettes the bling palettes are fun I like to splatter with those 
and that um, that unicorn watercolor is really it's got kind of like a bluish purplish tint to it um, so it, it's really sparkly and I'll let that dry and then I'm gonna ink blend some of my other pieces so I've got that stacked frame and I'm just going to use the light, or I'm sorry, the medium and the dark shades of purple. I think I've got Wilted Violet and Villainous Potion um, for the medium and dark. And then I'll use the Milled Lavender in a second for the ghost. Uh, but I want to get some of these other background pieces in the medium to dark range. Um, I'm not using black on the frame because I want it to pop a little bit. On those two arches, I'm turning those into the tombstones. And those candy pieces, um, I'm turning those into bats. So I'm going to use the, uh, the purple on there and then black just on the bats and a little bit on the bottom of the tombstones. I wanted light at the top of the tombstones so they kind of look like they're backlit. But again, I didn't want them too light because I want the ghost to really pop. Um, so, and you see, I've got the, I'll pull the background in just to kind of check everything as I go, make sure I'm getting enough contrast or if I need more. And here's where I will bring in that lightest shade, that milled lavender, and I'm bringing in a much smaller brush because I just want a little bit here and there. I don't want color everywhere, I just want to kind of get it on the edges. Um, and you'll see I'm, I'm even using that little piece of memo tape to uh, kind of mask off part of the ghost. And I did save one of those eyeballs, which I'll show you how to turn it into a little ghost. I don't end up using it, but that's kind of why I saved it here. Um, and I'll, I'll show you if you want to use it in a card for yourself. Once I'm happy with the way the color is on those guys, then I'm going to grab two of those little insert pieces, and those are going to go behind his legs. And I'll just kind of darken them up a little bit so that the stripes on his legs really pop. And for the vellum, you can use Distress Oxide, but it doesn't dry very well. Um, so Copic markers dry super fast for vellum. Uh, I just grabbed one color that looked in, it's, it looked to be in the right shade, but then as I put it together with the background and everything else, I realized it was a little on the blue side. You can see how the light comes through it just fine. But watch, I'll show you with the background, and hopefully you can see on camera. In person, it was just a little bit too blue and not quite purple enough. So I brought in another uh, violet marker. I'm just going to kind of pinken it up a little bit to get it in the right shade. And I realized that the, um, the chisel tip kind of gives you a more even coat on vellum. And using those tweezers helps keep the ink off my fingers so I don't put fingerprints on on there while it's drying and then you can see I've got three ghosts here one is black the other two are white and I'll show you what the black is for it's really kind of like a blackout curtain but I'm just gonna trim up the vellum sandwich it in between these two white ghosts first and then I'll show you how the light comes through that the light there the one light is really bright um, which is it's really cool. It's really easy if you've never played with these lights before. Just think of it as, I, I just tell everybody, think of it as a flat little flashlight and you sandwich it between your card pieces and then you've got a light up card. So I've got my two ghosts here, the two white ones with the vellum in place and I'll show you when you stick it over the light, because that light is so bright you're gonna get a dot, like a nose, we don't want the nose. We just want his eyes to light up. So that's what that other black piece is for. Again, think of it like a blackout curtain and you can really direct how much light comes through or where the light comes through. So you can always do that when you're playing with lights. And then I want to uh, work on his legs real quick. So the two little purple pieces that I ink blended, I'm just going to glue them to the back of the legs. I could have cut little strips, but those were pop outs from the frames and they fit in there perfectly. Uh, they're a little long, so I'll trim them down. It's not a problem, but they were the right width to go in there and they were handy. So I'll just trim those away. And then I decided that I needed those legs to have a little more weight, a little more body to them so that they'll swing better. So instead of just adding another layer of legs to the back, 
I went ahead and added two more purple strips. Again, it's just for the weight. It's not doing anything else at this point. Um, I could have cut more legs, but the purple strips were already there. <laughs> Why make more work, right? So I'll add those guys in, trim them off, and then I can glue on the back set of legs so that it's all sandwiched together. And that'll give me a weighty enough piece that it'll just really dance nicely. There we go, let that dry. And then I wanna glue on his arms. When you cut this die out, there's a little triangle um, at the bottom of the ghost um, on the die itself so that you don't lose the arm. And at first I didn't realize what it is, but it is the arm, so if you're cutting it out and you're wondering what that piece is, it's the arm. <laughs> and I just stacked two of them up there because I, I didn't need a, a black piece behind there. The light doesn't come through there. Then I want to glue on my sentiment onto the bigger tombstone. And I'm just using the frame to kind of give me a guide so I know how far up or down to put it. And once I've got that glued in place, I'm going to put both of my tombstones at the bottom of the frame. And then I'll use a pencil and just trace right underneath the top layer of the frame um, so that I can trim it off. I ended up actually trimming that small one even shorter, but this gives me a line because that it's kind of a wonky line and I want to be able to tuck it under, have something to glue to, but not go too high up and lose some of my sentiment there. Now before we assemble everything, and we are close to assembling, I promise, um, I do want to stamp the word push onto the ghost, and I apologize, I should have showed you that set at the beginning. Um, that's interactive labels from My Favorite Things, and it's got the word push in there. And my trick for lining up the push stamp is to put the element, in this case it's a ghost, put the ghost in my MISTI, put my light in there lined up where I want the light to be and the button to be, and then I'll put the stamp on top, close my MISTI door, and that picks up the stamp in just the right place. Then I'll move the light out of the way and I can stamp the word right where the button is going to be. Works perfectly every time. Okay, so now here's where we're assembling. And if you skipped ahead, this is where you're coming back in. <laughs> um, so I've got my card front that I ink blended there, and then I'm just going to stick it to the card base, glue it down. In this case, I was a little bit long, so I trimmed that off, no big deal. Then I can glue that stacked up frame in place. And again, instead of using the little micro dots, I wanted to use glue here so that I didn't get any dots on the top of the frame. And it's nice and clean. I'll stick that down, put a block on top of it to dry while we assemble the ghost. Oh, wait, before we do that, we're going to put the tombstones in place. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, so tombstone one. And then I do like to use tweezers when I'm working with stuff like this. It just gets my fingers out of the way so I can really see. Tombstone two. You can see I trim that one up even shorter just so that it's kind of further back. And there's our block. Now, this is the little ghost I was going to show you how to make. I don't end up using him, but in case you want to, I think it would be cute if you didn't have the, the tombstones. Maybe this it would just end up being too busy for me here. But I used a pencil to mark where I wanted his eyeballs, and then I punched them out with a 16th inch hole punch. And then just use some scissors to kind of ruffle the bottom there, or rough up the bottom, I guess. And you can see I have a mini ghost that could kind of pop out of the tombstone. I don't end up using it, but I thought it, it would be fun. And those little candy pieces, this is where I turn them into bats. I just used one of our essential gel pens, the white ones. Um, I always start them on my finger. Kathy Rakusen taught me that trick and it works great. With gel pens, just go slow and kind of let that ink flow because it's a little thicker than regular ink. So if you go slow, and remember that it's a little more viscous, it'll work great for you. So this is one of the slider tabs from My Favorite Things. This is a round one. This is how I'm gonna make my ghost dance. If you have round foam dots, um, 
they'll work great too. Just make sure you uh, have the same thickness as your battery. These little dots from MFT are the, the same thickness, so they're perfect. And I'm just adding double stick adhesive to the front and back of my light. And this way I can kind of assemble my ghost here. I'm going to assemble the ghost separate from the card and then just stick them down all at once. So I figured out where I wanted the, the light to be and I'll peel off the release paper that's just on the silver clip there. And then I can stick the ghost to it. And then when I flip it over, we'll attach the legs. So I'm gonna slide the legs up in place. And then I'm gonna use some Gina K Connect glue because this glue works great for plastics. It's a little slower to dry, but it, it works really good for sequins and gems and plastic things like this. And then I'm gonna take one of those other eyeball pieces um, that was the cutout from the ghost. And I'm just going to glue it on the back side on top of that dot. That just locks those legs into place so that when I flip them over, the legs don't fall off. And I did let that dry. I kind of paused the camera and I let it dry for a minute because like I said, that glue takes a minute to dry. And then I switched back to PVA glue. I removed the release paper on the back side of the one light and then I can just stick it down. And that is how I added the light. And you see what I mean about it just being a flashlight that you just kind of sandwich in between there? So it's very simple to use. And then now is where I add my little embellishments to finish up the card. Again, I haven't decided about the ghost yet, but I realize two ghosts and two tombstones is too many twos. <laughs> I like odd numbers. Um, maybe if I had made a third little guy, but then it starts to just get too busy. Um, I like those three bats because the bats are so similar to the background that they don't there's not a lot of contrast. You have to look close to see them. And so the ghost is really the star of the show. And the tombstones just kind of add to the scenery. Same with the frame. Um, but I didn't want too many, ele too many elements to just distract you. I wanted it to just be fun. Again, that's why I kind of went with this monotone, a monochromatic theme here. Just all shades of purple. Actually, I think that was... That was inspired by a craft roulette card recently. One of the parameters was uh, monochromatic, and I thought that was really fun. So I made my ghost card all purple. And once I get my last bat in place here, you can see the finished card. And I'll show you how he dances and how he lights up. Even with the studio lights on, he's really bright there. I think this is a really fun card. I hope that I've inspired you to give a card like this a try. Again, Spellbinders has a whole series of Christmas and Halloween um, dancing figurines, so they're a lot of fun. I'll link everything that I use down below for you. And if you're new to the channel, feel free to hit subscribe and ring that bell so you can see more videos. I do have uh, a few more videos here to share as well, some more light up cards and some other fun interactives. As always, my friends, thanks for watching.